a joy to be here together today at Norton Park United Methodist Church. We are so thankful for those that are here worshiping with us in person as well as those worshiping with us online. For those online, please leave a comment. Let us know that you're worshiping with us and we will be gathering prayer concerns here in a little bit. So if you have some, you can go ahead and start putting them in. We do have a fair amount of visitors wonderfully uh, joining with us today, and we are having the privilege of celebrating new life in Christ. Whenever we gather uh, at church on Sunday, even those of us that are hardcore, been doing it all of our lives and don't know how to stay away, Sunday is a chance to be reborn, to touch the waters of rebirth and be renewed. And we find that throughout the Bible experience and the faith experience beyond, that the saints often were finding places to have new revelations of God. So we hope that this today is that type of place for all who are here. Whether you knew Norton Park when you first opened your eyes, or if today you open your eyes and you know Norton Park, we are glad to have you in both those ways. And we welcome you in the name of Christ. Now, I am doing this as a reminder for myself. I'm turning off my ringer. <laughs> and making sure it can't be accessed. Now, some of you have my number, and last week one of our youth texted me several times in the service and said, you're doing fine, Pastor Brian. I love the encouragement, <laughs> but it made me decide I need to turn off my cell phone, so just keep it in mind. But you're welcome to do encouragement, I just may not respond immediately. We begin every Sunday with the scripture of the week, and this week it is coming from John 13, verse 34 and 35. It's a good one to be reminded of, and let me invite you to read it aloud with me as we share together. Here we go. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So one of the traditions of our church that we have practiced for a while now, at least while I've been here, is four questions. And I wish I could tell you I came up with this. But a saint of the church back in the 5th century said, you know, we should use these exercises as a way of kind of bringing forth our behavior with God. And if a saint wasn't enough to recommend it, my wife started doing this. And um, if you haven't met St. Catherine, uh, or Reverend Catherine, you'll know that I do. I live best when I live within her wishes. So these are the four questions that I've made my practice and brought to the church. The questions are, where in the past week have you seen God? Or where is somewhere in the last week you needed God? Or where is somewhere in the last week that you felt joy? Or where is somewhere that you have experienced gratitude? We just invite the church to raise their hand and answer a question aloud, and we share it together. So are there... He was born with a rare leg issue. We weren't really sure what it was, you know, but now that he's 25, he has come to a point where it's like something had to be done. One was um, longer than the other, okay. and then it, it also had formed some odd coloring on one of the legs, and it would swell, and you know, whatever. So after many different doctors and specialists, they um, decided what kind of surgery he needed. So Saturday, he graduated from University of Mankato. Tuesday morning, he went in for the surgery that we've been putting off many, many years. So okay. all went well, and they said that he's fine, but now um, he's home, um, resting, and then he's got um, vigorous PT coming yes. in the next yeah. many, many months. So there's somewhere where he can feel excited, whatever happens with his leg. So we need, uh, we need lots of prayers for him that he's finally on the right track to get um, his leg healing. All right, and he's just graduated from Cincinnati. <laughs> Remind me his name? Brian. Oh, I think I'll remember that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Cousin Brian. I didn't have to do that. Nephew. Nephew Brian. Nephew Brian. My so. oldest brother's name is Brian, and then his eldest son is Brian. You're besieged. I hope there's a lot of nice on my part. Thank you. All right, Bonnie? Was it Bonnie? Yeah. Oh, I just feel joy, and now we're on our second beautiful day here. <laughs> it's a if you're watching from a distance, we're not keeping track, but it's the second beautiful Sunday of the year. <laughs> Excellent. Is there any, any more in the back? Sound guy, did you have anything? He's just waving encouragement about it finally being the right weather, right? Yes. Are there any other checking in? Yes, I see it. I feel joy just seeing Miss Sally having this little baby, <laughs> little baby baptized. I've known some of 
all of them. And they remembered me. <laughs> what a surprise. I felt gratitude for Tootie this week. For Tootie this week. I was rushing between the, the meetings one day during, during work week and thought, oh, I'm not going to have time for lunch. And I reached into the center console and there were some snacks in there for your Sunday school. <laughs> prayer. Jesus reminded the disciples. Love one another in my love you. Jesus taught and witnessed to God's love. Love one another as I have loved you. Jesus encourages us to love each other with tenderness, compassion, and hope. Let, Let us love one another as Christ loved us. Gracious and loving God, together we are grateful Yeah. 
Holy Spirit lands and does stuff. And I live for this. But as we've already heard testimony from the church, you are already loved in this space, right? They're, you're a family that is known to this congregation. Um, you have married into yet another magical last name. Conley means something here. I mean, it does. <laughs> and, uh, and we are now going to see the fruit of prayers and love come to fruition. And we are so thankful for that. As is part of our tradition, we ask some questions of the parents in lieu of the young lady answering for herself. And then you, church, will be asked some questions as well. So I invite you to buckle your spiritual seatbelts and be ready for the questions when they come. Through the sacrament of baptism, we become a part of Christ's holy church. And we become a part of God's mighty acts of salvation. And as we mentioned earlier, we are given new birth through water and through the Holy Spirit. And this is a gift. We don't take it. Um, we don't earn it. We can't buy a stairway to heaven. This is God's gift. So who is it that is being presented for baptism? I always like mom and dad to pronounce the name. Go ahead. Finley Jessica. Finley Jessica. So Finley Jessica, I'm going to ask your parents on behalf of the whole church, mom and dad and family, the godparents who are gathered, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? sin? If so, say we do. We do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say we do. We do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages and nations and races. If so, say we do. We do. And now, wonderfully, will you nurture this young lady, Finley, in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, she might be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly and lead a Christian life? If so, say we will. All right, I warned you, congregation, this time will come, and it is now. Do you, as Christ's body the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ, and so say we do? We do. We do. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life, and include Finley and her parents and godparents now before you in your care? In your care? With me, uh, the part that's in bold above your head. With God's help. We will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these beautiful people with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life eternal. And now the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Finley, this is the part I told your mom and dad that when I did this, you could come play in the water. So I'm going to pour. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. And after the flood, you set the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. I like it. You're the type that's wanting to go for full immersion. <laughs> I like it. In the fullness, of, that's okay. Yeah. In the fullness of your time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit, and he called his disciples to share the baptism of his death and resurrection, to make disciples of all nations. Holy God, we would pour, ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and the one who is to receive it to wash away her sins, to clothe us all in righteousness throughout our lives, and that dying and being raised with Christ, we all together may share in the final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. All right. All those who are here, this is a holy act that involves the holy community. Let me invite you to come and put your own hands to the water as Finley is instructed. So, grandmas, grandpas, moms, dads. All right. And if you can find a place on Finley you think she won't be so upset about. <laughs> and just touch. There you go, Finley. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I baptize you. There you go. Now, Finley, would you like to play in the water again? Finley? Oh, see, that guy makes a cross in there. Look at that. 
You may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And now we welcome you and your family to our congregation and recognizing you, the mark of Jesus. We're going to invite you to play in the holy waters for the rest of your life. And in saying that, this bowl and this vase are yours. They've been made by a member of the church, and they're asked of you to take with you. So this would be a symbol not only can hopefully she remember her baptism, but you can remind her. And you might tell her she was up to her arms in it, too. <laughs> so if later she's got some strange behaviors, like humming hymns around the church and telling Jesus rhymes like my kids do, you know why. Okay. okay. My friend... I'm going to ask mom and dad if they would be the ones who walk her da Finley down the, the corner. We've done a little handoff earlier, and she likes this situation. But can we sing to her as she comes up and down the, the um, altar? So if you all would, just go on down the aisle, I mean, and we will sing to you. We are so thankful as a congregation to have young people in it. And while Finley represents one of the youngest edges of our congregation, we have all ages that we welcome. Even the ones that help us hide snacks in our car consoles. That's amazing. I want to invite those helpers, the young people who are a part of our kingdom time, to come up and participate in our time together. Oh, it's grown-up girls. All right, have a seat, grown-up girl. Have a seat, grown-up girl. Right there. And mm, I got one more. Oh, I like your shoes and socks. There you go, grown-up girl. All right. Sometimes we have younger people, and especially, I don't want to be rough on the boys, but the boys get a lot of momentum. I can trust the young ladies to sit right? And you don't want to see me anyways. You want to see the wisdom that these young ladies have, because this is a lot of brilliance right here. A lot of smarts right here. All right, so let's see just how smart. Um, first off, we, we invite our youth every week to bring a stuffed animal or a quiet toy, um, and that's how we were doing kingdom time during <laughs> the great pandemic, and now that we're back close, we're just keeping up. Plus, I like stuffed animals. So what did you bring? Fel by Felicia. Oh, sorry. Felicia. And what? It's a toucan? Yeah. Toucan. I like Felicia. Did anyone else bring an animal or a quiet toy? I brought some extras. You want to help me? So these don't have names. This is Snake and this is Cow. <laughs> they came from my boy 
Joe's room as well as David is my provider of all soft and beautiful things, and that's what he gave me today because I had told him the story of what I was doing. He said, Jesus. So to start off my kingdom time today, I've got to ask you, how many of you ever have eaten at Burger King? Okay. How many of you have ever eaten at Snake King? You've never eaten at Snake King? Is that even a thing? <laughs> well, you've eaten burgers that are made from what? Cows. And I guess you could eat a snake king if it's made from what? Snake. Snake. But have you ever eaten a snake? Should I ask the church if anyone out there has ever eaten a snake? Do you want to know? I mean, we need to know who to avoid, right? Have any of you ever eaten a snake? No. no one in the church has eaten snakes. So why do you think that is? They're nasty. <laughs> what do you think? I, I had a chocolate grasshopper once. A chocolate grasshopper. <laughs> Wait, okay, so you're on to something. There are things that we have grouped into the things we eat, right? And then there are things that we put into things we don't eat. Where do you all think that came from? Do you know? No, no, no. So it all is animals. But why are there animals we eat and animals we don't eat? She says with a snake around her neck. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So moms and dads might have some clues. Why do we eat some animals and animals we don't? Do you know? Some taste better. Some taste better. <laughs> That's, that it could be true. So in the Old Testament, there are some instructions of things you could eat and things you couldn't. And one of the things that was on the list of things you can't eat was snake. And one of the things that you could eat was cow. cow. So they were separated. And, you know, some of those traditions still stay with us. Now, in the New Testament, a lot of things that were told to not eat suddenly became okay. And I'm going to talk about that later in the sermon. So if you stick around, I'll explain there. But what I want to offer to you is that even God at different times has said there are things you do use and things you don't. And I'm supposed to be talking about tithing. But what that means to me is there are gifts that God has given some that you're asked to say, hold these special, hold this private. An example, God gives you the gift of 11 and 12 and says music of worship. We don't go and put this time in other places like if suddenly someone says, well, I hear that you've got church time and you can give your time away, so how about you come and do this other thing that takes all the space all the time. You might do it once or twice, but usually we reserve this time for now. But then God says, look at all the other time in your life. Go spend it in wonderful ways that make people happy. And support them. And so you do that. So it's kind of like the snake and the cow. Some things we do. And there are things we don't. Some we participate in and some we don't. Some things we keep and some things we give away. So I want you to just silently think for a minute. What are some of the things that God wants you to keep special for God? And then think about some of the things that God might say. I want you to give those away to share it. Who knows? Maybe it will be food.
the word. I scratch through them as I say them, but they come back to me. I don't think you said this. I don't think you said this. So they keep me on my toes. It's wonderful. We now have some special music. All of us, I think, know Phyllis from down at Asbury. She's a beloved sister of Christ. And she and Amanda got together and recorded a special song, Shout to the Lord. So let's invite you to meditate with God speak to you during this time of worship. And this is one of uh, Roger's favorite songs, so it's a birthday present for him. Aw, yeah. nice. His birthday yesterday. Oh, yes. Oh. My birthday is this week. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, versions of the bulletin that each week she then translates both into an overhead that is outstanding, a bulletin that's outstanding, and then, by the way, she plays music for it, too, and uh, convinces Bonnie to get her in there to make her look good, too. I mean, you know, there's a lot of work going on, and we are very appreciative of all the work that everyone does, including the choir uh, that has been recording ahead. Um, it's just been beautiful, so thank you all who are involved. Yeah, I can't wait. I love it. Um, how many did you record when they got together? Three. Three. So that will be the last of? Um, I think the last until fall. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it's just a prayer. Okay. It's just a daily prayer. I've been playing them um, unrequested, but I give them anyways, to the three different um, nursing facilities that I go and visit. And one of the days the lady goes, your preaching's okay, but I wish you'd just come and play music. <laughs> so it's obviously being received well. <laughs> no filters over there. Speaking of filters, we're going to get a little bit into some of that today. We've got two scriptures to read. Nola, do you want to read any of these? They are long and tedious, and everyone's going to get tired of my voice. You are beautiful and speak well. Do you want to read any of these? Come on up then. <laughs> now Nola is going to grow into a tall woman. Can I just read it? Yeah, do it. Yeah. And she, here you go then. You ready? Just, just stay out in front. And there you go. You can read this one. And then if you feel have the energy and want to keep going, just go for the next. Sweet. 
I didn't warn her ahead of time. It's totally unfair, but she's that awesome. And they have gone out, Jesus said, and now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him in his children. mischief. All right. Thank you, Nola. And so now I'm going to read from Acts 11, 1 through 18. It's a bit of a story, but it's worth hearing. Now the apostles and believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had accepted, also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went into Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him saying, why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, say, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw something like a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered at its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But at a second time, the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he'd seen the angels standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced. And they praised God, saying, then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of these words. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, as we grow in your love, we find that you continue to surprise us. Help us to be open to where you lead, even as we hold fast to your commandment to love one another. Amen. One of the perks of the improving weather is an increased amount of time outside. Can I get an amen? Really? Catherine found herself this weekend with the Boy Scouts at Asbury United Methodist Church camping on the church property to get some extra nights in because the rain had canceled all the other scout events. So they just said, all right, we're not going to try and go anywhere. We'll just put a tent up outside the church. We're going to camp out there as much as we can. If it gets bad, we're just going in. But it went nicely. And they decided to go on a hike as well. They went hiking down around the river area. And it was an area Catherine had not been before. But some, for some reason, she found herself at the beginning of the trail. 
And at one point, she was following a map, and the trail went two directions that were not on the map. So she stopped and had to wait for someone else to come. She needed more guidance because she didn't want to lead anyone the wrong direction. In our scripture today, we have just that same type of fork in the road where the path seems to go one way and suddenly, whoa, out of nowhere, it's going somewhere else. And I think if we were to be honest, you know, okay, so at church we come with the rules of the right answer is always Jesus, it's always love, but sometimes don't you ever want to just say, now listen, I know that's the right answer, but the obvious answer is what gives, what's going on? And this is one of those type of scriptures, right? It seems at first, like the behavior that is being asked of Peter is just out and out wrong. You know how the youth were like, well, the reason we don't eat snakes because they're like gross, right? That's an honest, good answer. And so we don't need to wonder too much at Peter's response. He's not just talking about the fact that he's never eaten anything that defiled him, but also, by the way, he eats the nice things and the gross things he leaves to the side. And I think here we're at the crux of the matter. What do we do when God gives instructions that seems like God is leading us to break the rules and to break our expectations and to break our habits? We know that God is a God of surprises. We've been talking about this for weeks now. We've been talking about it with Peter as well. We have seen earlier in Acts that God uses surprising people to share God's love. Do you remember last week we had a guy named Saul, whose name eventually will become Paul, who is out persecuting Christians only to be turned and become the church's greatest proponent. He's the one that advocates half of the New Testament, which we now call Holy Scripture. We also remember our faithful friend Peter. Remember how he represents all of us? He's not just Peter, but he's kind of like all of us in this room. He's trying to be careful in his practice of faith only to be surprised again by God. And I say surprised again because, of course, Peter is our character of surprises, right? He's the one that uh, tries to argue with Jesus about dying and being resurrected only to get yelled at. He's the one that met Jesus on the beach and is forgiven and reinstated to be the head of the church. Peter is constantly learning and growing in his understanding of God which is really the lesson I want to get to today. While it seems as if God kind of changes God's mind, or asks us to do things that originally God had said don't do, what if it's actually God's constant and unyielding love, and we're the ones that are changing? I've been coping a lot lately with that whole idea of us being the ones changing and growing, because as some of you know, I have an 18-year-old. He's half hair and half man, and he's getting ready to go from, I thought, learning to walk last week to now learning how to walk to the other side of the world to attend college, possibly in China. I kind of wish I'd cut his legs off early and didn't let him go, right? But it's too late now. And you see, things have changed. When he was young and I would be cooking a meal, that little two-year-old toddler would come up and see that I was at the stove and want to help. But you remember what two-year-olds do at the stove? They can't see over it, right? So what do they do? And I'm wiping little fingers away, saying, don't get near the stove. I appreciate you want to help, but you can't be up here. Last week, while mom was on that camping trip, the 18-year-old came into the house, made biscuits, southern biscuits. Put cheese down, soft fried eggs, and prepared breakfast for me unasked. Now, did my love for him change that suddenly I went from don't get near the oven to I will share this incredible meal that you've made? Or did something else happen? He grew up, right? And my love for him is just as consistent, if not stronger than ever before, but I no longer need the same type of protection for him, for him to be safe and healthy and prospering, I don't treat him the same as I once did. My love is constant, but my expression of it changes for the young man because he has grown up. So I want to offer you today that in the same way God's care for us might be unwavering,
but yet change for us as we develop. You're going to see this mom and dad with Finley. The expression of love that right now means I'm holding her tight and gently. Later will be the same love that gently holds her so that she can be let go to take flight in the world that is ahead. But this is what God is constantly reflecting to us in our lives as Christians too, whether we be 8 or 80. And our passage from John helps us sink into the heart of who God is and what God's about. Consistently throughout the Bible, we see that God's care is for all people. We see God's concern is for the outcast, the stranger, the alien. And we see people encountering God in new ways and new spaces. But yet the, God's love remains steadfast. And God constantly has a desire for the best of us to come out of us, to come through us and be expressed to others. Jesus said in the John passage, and this is worth quoting and knowing, maybe even having it tattooed on our hearts, whether literal or figurative, it is this. I give you a new commandment that you should love one another. Just as I loved you, you also should love one another. And as Nola read, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. In my experience, God's love keeps drawing me to more and more different places with more and different people. You remember a couple weeks ago where we read Revelation and it said, the multitude of the throne were gathered of every tribe and every nation. That just reminds us that God's love doesn't have boundaries. And now I like to have boundaries, right? right? And some of you want me to have more boundaries. We can talk about that later. But the fact is boundaries aid us, right? They help us know the place that we need to be, where we're going. I like this church because when I come in and I open the door and I see the people, there are some expectations and it comforts me when I hear the choir singing, even when you're not hearing and I'm in a retirement home or a, a skilled nursing facility, the boundaries of your voices make me smile and giggle because I know who's singing. Was that Stephen that squeaked a little there? I hope it was, right? I love that. But what I find is that God's love, which is consistent and meets me at every boundary, still knows no bounds. Here we are, and people like us are the ones that God calls us to pay attention to, but we are called to not forget about everyone else. So if this feels a little bit woozy to you, like suddenly the things you've counted on, you've been asked to say, you know what, let's try something else, let's do something new, I do want to give you three expressions that are pretty consistent for God's love. The first is this place, right now the community of faith. It is important to know that we can stay grounded in the community of faith. And it doesn't always have to be the church or this church. There can be lots of places where we touch the community of faith. But the community of faith is where we support one another and are willing to share ideas and grow together. Now, I think most of you know that I'm a big fan of Dolly Parton, right? Have you all figured that out yet? Have I said that before? I might have. So do you all know what she was nominated for recently? The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Come on, Rock and Roller, say it again. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's my girl from East Tennessee, right? And what did she initially do? She turned it down. She did it in a very Dolly Parton sort of way, like, what a great honor. I'm so glad that they would think of me that way. But there are so many other deserving artists, and I just think that they should be the ones who get recognized because I'm really more country than rock and roll. That's what she said, and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame said, well, we, we hear what you said, your name is still on the ballot, we're going to keep sending it around. And then they talked to Dolly about other people from the classic country side who have been a part of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in the past, like some guy named Johnny Cash and a variety of other people. And Dolly listened to the community around her. She listened to those that were a part of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame staff and former inductees, and she changed her mind. Which is good, because she not just got nominated, right? She was voted to be inducted, and on May 4th they said she's coming. So Dolly, with her two greatest assets, her brain and her bravery, are going to be inducted into the, into the Hall of Fame. 
Pretty cool, right? But the thing that I love and admire about Dolly is her flexibility and willingness to evolve and change. We see that in Peter, right? Peter's, oh, God bless Peter. He's all of us, but he's the one that does it wrong every time first to the point that he needs to be trained how to do it right once, twice, three times, and finally he gets it, right? It's the community of faith that he's connected to, both in Joppa, where he starts, those who receive him with faith. It's not surprising it's three men who come to him. Again, Peter needs all the encouragement he can get. And then he goes back to the community in Jerusalem, who are at first not so sure about the whole thing, but later say, look at what God has done. They reaffirm Peter and his journey. Did God's love change? No. But did it look like it did? Yes. And the thing that helps Peter stay constant is his connection to the community. There is a second thing that happens that's worth noting too. And that is this, that when God's love is stretching and growing and seemingly changing, one of the things that helps us stay grounded and yet flexible is our experiences and our study in faith. As we grow in our experiences and education and faith, we gain new depths about God's love. We pick up little things like nuances, and surprising new lengths to which God will go to express love. When Catherine and I went to seminary, one of the things they would tell us in our small community congregations in North Carolina is, be careful when you go to Duke, you'll lose your religion over there. And I understand what they were saying. Because we learned about God and the Bible, and our relationship to God and understanding grew and changed in ways we never could have imagined. So maybe it looked like to them from the outside I'd lost faith. But the truth was that what I believed and knew had grown so much it looked different. And this journey of faith about where God's presence and our ways of speaking has expanded to where I no longer only hear God in a southern dialect. I think that if Jesus were to show up right now in front of me, he'd say, hey, Brian, I got this thing I want to do. You want to go with? In the south, we don't end in a, pro in a preposition. So what if... What if Jesus is Minnesotan too? What if he's Wisconsin too? I didn't, I don't know, maybe, maybe. That's a boundary I still got to stretch, but we will see. But the point is that as we continue to learn and grow, God's love gets bigger, not smaller. And it's one of the ways we stay connected. This last one that I want to encourage you in ways that we see God's love grow and prepare us is the practice of forgiveness. Now, friends, this is the cornerstone of the Christian church. We know nothing unless we know God's forgiveness for us and from us for others. There's some different acts of forgiveness that happen here. One is Peter looks like he's finally forgiven himself. Remember how hard he was on himself after denying Christ and some of the other pratfalls he went through? This time, Peter is in front of the church in Jerusalem explaining everything, and he explains to them, he's the knucklehead that said no to God, saying, hey, you can eat all this. I love that Peter just shows up and says, you know what? I denied it, or I said, no, Lord, I would never defile myself with these things, and God had to persist not one, not two, but three times. I wonder if this is where third time's the charm comes from. I love also the humility and gentleness with which Peter treats himself, saying, this is my pattern, this is how God works with me, I don't get it right a lot, but then I finally do. And he gives it as his witness and his testimony. And I love how the community of faith is reluctant, curious, about this profession. I mean, it's weird, things have gotten weird. Imagine your worst enemy, the person you detest the most, suddenly turns from what they have been like and says, I believe in Jesus. Not only to believe in Jesus, I'm going to change the way I live. I mean, that's what Peter is doing. He, the Hebrews are occupied by the Roman people. A centurion of the Roman army is an atheist and an apostate of the highest order. They have probably killed your brothers and sisters. They occupy your land and they believe in foreign gods if they believe in anything at all. What they really believe in is the spear. So Peter has been called to that person's house to visit with them, to talk with them, to watch the Holy Spirit come down and eat with them, and then return back to home base and explain why he deviated from the path. 
Peter with gentleness that is not natural to him and control also not natural to him tells the community of faith what has happened and the community of faith gets quiet and then they praise God. The reason they praise God is they recognize the Holy Spirit baptism is a sign of God's forgiveness. The reason we get quiet and awe is watching Finley get baptized and know that something is happening. We are it's bigger than us. You all are going to remember Finley playing like crazy in that water, right? And later when the Holy Spirit's touching her life, you'll say, you started out pretty strong, girl. There's no reason to think you can't keep going, right? That's what Peter is talking about here. It's pretty exciting. And I, I've been in a lot of churches. It takes a lot for, A, a church to get quiet, and secondly, they say, we've all changed our perspective. That's amazing. Praise God. We at least need a month to kind of round that corner. We don't do it in a night. That's at least two administrative board meetings. Wouldn't you say, Kathy? But that's the testimony today. So I want to offer you today, what are you going to do this week when God says, I love you and I have loved you and I will keep loving you, but I want to change the way you've experienced this love. In the past church, you've said people with extra holes for earrings, they don't get in. People with tattoos, they're not in. People that wear mismatching socks, they're not in. Pastors who wear running shoes in the middle of the pulpit, they don't get in. I mean, there's a whole list of everyone doesn't get in, but what if God's grace says, everything you thought you knew, broken. I have yet to find a person who can't be received into God's grace and love. That is some good news. How are you going to prepare for that in the week ahead? I hope that troubles you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn is Listen to Your Children Praying. Let me invite you to stay seated as we sing it through twice. Two-year-old yeah. granddaughter. Boy and a girl, Lincoln and Luella, and Charlie. You keeping all the dogs with you too? Yes, all the dogs. I think you just need to fess up that. So, how many living souls will be in your house at one time, Kim? Um, Oh, no, 
husband has COVID. He's very yeah. sick. When you said Joe at first, I was a little worried that there was another Joe. Oh. And I'm glad to hear it's not. But I'm sorry for Joe's too. Mm -hmm. And we pray for his continued healing. But Sherry, is doing okay? She, she's so far. Yep. 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 <laughs> is there any, any other prayers? in our midst and to remember all of us have been touched by your Holy Spirit asking us to be new creations. Lord, we repent of our multitude of brokenness and sins and remember we've got a great example in Peter who didn't just suddenly get straight with his interaction with Jesus himself for three years. Thank you for continuing to perfect Peter in front of our eyes in scripture and knowing that we are also being perfected in faith to become the persons you have always seen in us that we might be loved into your full creation. Lord, we give thanks for the places where blood and sweat and tears and witness have been before us to lead us in faith. And we thank you for the saints who have gone before and pray for us even now. We thank you for those who are a part of our community of faith who are unable to worship directly with us but continue to undergird the church with telephone calls and contact, their emotional support and their physical support. We thank you for those who run the soundboard and change the light bulbs, who unlock the church doors and make sure the heat is running. And Lord, we thank you for our community of faith, the larger neighborhood of Norton Park and its surroundings. Thank you for those who still consider us a spiritual home, whether they're here or not. Thank you for the ways that we are constantly getting new opportunities to love people or to have our love tested and be stretched and remember that Jesus did not have limits or boundaries. Lord, we ask for healing, help, and wholeness for those within these walls and beyond. We pray for those who are continuing to be harmed by gun violence, by racism, and by out-and-out -out war. Lord, for all of these things, help convict our own hearts for our contributions. Turn us and show us new ways and allow us to have the energy and strength to follow Christ yet one more day. And we do this in remembering the words he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so we have uh, the opportunity to remember the gifts and graces that God has given us and shared us so easily. There's so many ways to give. You can give in prayer. You can give in sweat. You can give in time. Uh, you can bake a snake burger for your friend. Okay, you can't do that. That's probably not going to work. But you can give your offerings. As you see, we have a place to mail. There is also uh, non-contact offering plates at the back of the sanctuary if you've brought paper that you want to put in there. And also, if there are prayer concerns you want to share that you haven't done so yet, you can put them in the offering plate as well. However you give, and however you give today and this week when God asks, may God be a part of your blessing. Will you join with me in singing the doxology? Please stand as you're able. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Lord, bless these gifts and all of us gathered in your name, that they and we might be used for your glory today and into the week ahead. Amen and amen. As you are standing, let's finish with our closing hymn, and then I'll do announcements. Is that okay, Kathy? We're already standing. I figured we'd do the Christian calisthenics a little less today. There you go. We'll be singing the closing hymn as the Spirit sends us forth to serve. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4. The Spirit sends I've given our spiritual DJ in the back a challenge today. I've moved around, I've changed slides. Is it this? This? It's always me. What do you want me to do? Hang tight. Okay. Oh.